So today I'm going to show you two ways of preparing plates in order to d carry out a mutual inhibition practical, where we're going to actually set two different species of bacteria against each other and see if there's any inhibitory effect between them. So I'm going to start off. Method one would be to prepare a pour plate. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare a pour plate uh, and I'm going to use 0.5 ml of Micrococcus luteus in the pore plate. So I'm going to follow aseptic procedures. I'm going to undo the bottle. I've got my Bunsen burner here. I'm going to flame the mouth of the bottle. I'm going to draw up 0.5 ml of the culture flame the bottle again and seal it up. And then just introduce it underneath the lid like that. That's now safe. Uh, no contamination can get in there. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to uh, add my egg or R onto the top of it, but for this particular practical, because we're going to dig wells or uh, take wells out of the uh, agar, we need a slightly thicker layer. So I'm going to use one and a half bottles of the agar, following exactly the same procedures that we've been used to. So I'm going to flame the mouth of the agar, bottle number one goes in. I'm now going to put it into the hot water so the agar doesn't set. So there's my hot water container. I'm now going to add half of this other bottle. That will give me a slightly thicker layer of agar to play with. It will take longer to set. I'm going to put, I'm going to need this little uh, amount of agar here to seal the bottom of the wells when I've taken them out. So I'm going to put this into the hot water as well, but with the stopper on, so that it remains molten. So that's number one. Alternatively, you may want to prepare a hockey stick, uh, a spread plate, and same thing applies, you're going to use one and a half bottles of the agar this time. So we're going to just flame the mouth of the bottle, pour it in. This is for a spread plate. We're going to put the discard pot into there. And then I'm going to just take out just half of what's in this bottle. I'm going to seal it up. and I'm going to leave it in there. If you were doing a continuous succession of plates, I'm only doing one, what you could do is you could use one and a half in each plate. So three, uh, three bottles of agar would do two plates. So my plates have set now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take a well out and how to seal the well. What you don't want to do is to take the lid of the plate off, but you can see that it's nicely set there. What I've got here is a sterile tip, which we've adapted. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to push the large end of the pipette filler down into the agar put my finger over the end and withdraw a core of the pour plate in this particular case. It doesn't always work, uh, but usually it does, and then you can put any waste onto there. Usually the waste stays in there. This is going to be autoclaved anyway. So here goes. So we're going to lift it up. You'll have to lift it up high enough to get underneath. And there's our little core just there. There is actually a core of agar in there 
and you can see just there that it's taken a nice clean core mm. out of the paper. All of this is going to go into the autoclave. The next thing you need to do is to seal the base of the well because you don't want, you're going to fill this well with uh, the second species of bacteria. What you don't want is the second lot of bacteria going to the bottom of the well and flowing underneath the agar. That will interfere with the result. So I'm just going to take one of my part filled bottles that I had left over. So here it is here. You only need a tiny amount. So I'm just going to just flame the mouth. I'm going to draw up a small amount into the pipette here. We'll flame that again because we'll be using that uh, for some of our other vessels. That goes back into the hot water and then I'm just going to reach underneath and I'm going to there we are. That's just popped um, a, a couple of drops of agar into the bottom of the well. And you can carry on with this same pipette topping up as long as you don't touch the material of the agar plate. If you do, um, you're going to start cross-contaminating, so you need to change your uh, pipette straight away. My well is nicely set. Now the agar in the bottom has set. So what I'm ready to do now is to introduce my second culture of bacteria. So this is a pore plate of E. coli and I'm going to place a reasonable quantity of the Micrococcus luteus into the well and that will gradually diffuse out into the surrounding medium and we're going to see if there's any inhibitory effect either by the Micrococcus luteus on the E. coli or that the E. coli prevents any growth of Micrococcus luteus. So again, aseptic conditions. I'm going to sterilize the mouth of my bottle. This is a sterile pipette. You don't actually need very much to, to fill the well because don't forget you put a little bit of agar in the bottom of it. So we're just going to reach underneath and we're going to pop some into the well there. Job done. It's ready for taping up and putting into the incubator. And within a couple of days, we should be able to see any inhibitory effect.